Finding the right hoist for your lifting application is vital to ensuring the investment that you make is a long lasting one. And in this video, we're gonna break down the NER three phase electric chain hoist. Welcome back to the Lifting and Rigging channel. My name is Devin and today we're going to talk about the NER three-phase electric chain hoist. Now joining me in this breakdown is Eric Schenkel from Harrington. Eric, thank you for joining me today, sir. Thank you for having me, Devin. And uh, I'd like to start by just having you give me some background on you. You know, what drew you to the lifting industry? How long have you been part of Harrington? And maybe even unpack a little bit about Harrington, you know, who they are, what they do, and how long they've been around. I've been in the rigging industry for a little over four years now. I began my career with Harrington in 2016. What drew me to the industry was uh, a chance to learn a completely different field, completely different industry. Uh, I was kind of stagnant in the industry I was uh, previously in for over 13 years. Uh, this was a great opportunity uh, for me to learn from the ground up uh, brand new uh, material. And it's been interesting ever since. I learned something new every single day I'm in this industry. Harrington Hoist has been around for, I believe, 154 years is where we're at now, providing customers solutions for their lifting needs. That's incredible. Over 150 years is a heck of a pedigree of time and experience and, you know, industry expertise. So that's that's really cool because now when we go into this and we start talking about what the system was designed for and how it works with the end users in mind, you've got over 150 years of people saying, hey, this is what works. This is what doesn't. Let's refine this. Let's get this going. So I'm really excited. So let's go ahead and dive into this. Can you address what problem the NER three-phase electric train hoist was built to solve? Sure. I wouldn't say there was necessarily a problem specifically that it was designed to build to solve. In 1998, we rolled out our first series of NER, which would have been called the NER1. And with the market in mind, we were trying to create the most durable, efficient, and user-friendly hoist that we could. From that time, from 1998 up until 2008, uh, the market changed a little bit and there was a demand for dual speed VFD hoists. So in 2008, we decided to roll out our second series, the NER2, which is what we currently have available. The NER2, all of our dual speed hoists come standard with a variable frequency drive. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we worked on a fail safe brake. Uh, we changed our braking mechanism from a pull rotor brake, which was in our NER1 series, to our Guardian Smart Brake, which relies on current. So when there's no current going to the hoist, the brake will not disengage. Um, so it will it will provide a safer solution if there's ever a power outage. So if the power goes out, it'll it'll hold whatever it's holding in the air. There will be no drop or anything of the of the load. Correct. I always think about the end user and the person who's maybe they just got hired on, they're starting to learn the ropes in their the industry, maybe they're not that comfortable. How how easy is it for somebody new to get to use this system, the NER three-phase electric chain hoist? It's much easier than any contactor type of uh, hoist with a variable frequency drive. It's a very smooth operation. So initially when you're starting your lift and beginning your pull, if there's a contactor, the hoist will jog. Um, with the VFD, it provides a much smoother solution and it will have much softer stops and starts. So as far as adjusting it, is that something that an end user can do or is that some like they need to reach out to Harrington to say, hey, we're this is what we were doing and this isn't quite what we wanted. You know, we want to dial it up or down. Can you help us or can they do it on their own? They can do it on their own. Absolutely. It's under the cover. As long as they have a man lift to get to the height of the hoist, take the control cover off and the VFD is right there visible for you. We actually have uh, YouTube videos out there to help uh, in the field. If somebody ever has trouble trying to adjust it, we have an instructional video on YouTube. So switching gears a little bit and talking about, you know, longevity of use. Harrington has been around for 150 years. They've really got these systems dialed in. You even said that this is the, the second iteration of the, the NER three-phase electric train hoist. What's the life cycle now of these systems? You know, if they're used properly in the right applications, they're being, you know, maintained and treated well, how long should these systems last an uh, end user? We try to go to market uh, with the hoist at, at a 10 plus year 
uh, marker for life's. Um, but in a good testament to the longevity of our hoist is we still have a number of our NER1 series hoists out there, which again, we rolled out in 1998. Uh, we still manufacture parts for those because they're still usable in the field. Uh, 2008, we rolled out the second series and there's still plenty of those out there in the field as well. So we're already past that 12 year mark for a lot of these hoists. So we're still waiting to see what the actual life cycle is on these things. Uh, with the new NER2 series, uh, we try to get them to go through 2 million cycles. Uh, the average hoist life is about 1,600,000 cycles, so we're trying to make sure we get past the 2 million cycle mark. Where do you see these systems working the best, where they're lasting the longest, because it's exactly what they were designed to solve for? They fit great in manufacturing, but also think of us for industrial as well. These things are IP55 gasket lined, so they can take extreme conditions as far as dust and water. So mills, foundries, pulp and paper manufacturing, automotive, those type of applications are, are great fits. For more demanding applications, they're, all, they're also indoor and outdoor rated, so you can hang them on a jib crane outside. A lot of your nastiest environments, if I can say that, um, dusty, dirty, wet conditions. When people aren't familiar with Harrington, I as a salesperson and we as a, as a company, we, when we try to break into a new end user and it's a, a bad environment, we always tell them to give us their worst uh, application. Uh, give us your most dirty, wet, any type of constant use. Let, let's place our first hoist there and I want you to see how this will operate under these nasty conditions. And once we do that, we can convert the customer over to Harrington uh, pretty easily. I know that in some other industries, like the salt water is a big impact, some high explosive, you know, industries, there's just certain things that just don't work in certain applications. Is there any places where these probably aren't a good fit for some companies? So the two that you just mentioned, let's start with salt water. Um, we're, we're great um, for any type of saltwater atmosphere. We do a lot with ship manufacturing. Uh, we sell a lot of manual products in those applications, but we can also place some, uh, some three-phase hoists as well. Um, so it can keep out the salt water because of the IP55 rating. However, sometimes that does limit the life of a hoist, but we will still outperform the competition. Uh, the one area we do not have a fit yet, and it is something I would love to see, is uh, explosion proof. We do not have a three-phase electric chain hoist that is explosion proof. So I want to go into maintenance and repairability of these systems. I know it's a contained system. There's not a whole lot of maintenance required for the most part, but stuff breaks down, stuff gets old, stuff gets beaten up in the truck. Um, can you tell me what the maintenance and repairability is like for these types of systems? So with every hoist you purchase through Harrington Hoist, we send out to you the owner's manual. Every single box will include an owner's manual. Depending on what hoist you buy, um, it will tell you uh, the maintenance, how to determine the maintenance schedule. First thing you need to do is try to determine what type of service your hoist is operating under. There are three different categories. There's normal service, which is defined as operation with randomly distributed loads within the capacity limit or uniform loads of less than 65% of rated capacity and operation of no longer than 25% of the time. That would be classified as normal service. The next category would be heavy service, which is operation within the rated load capacity, which exceeds normal service. And then lastly is severe service, which involves normal or heavy service uh, with abnormal operating conditions, such as weather, atmospheric conditions, or continual use. Once you determine what classification you are, that's when you can determine your uh, frequency of inspections. Now there are two different types of inspections. There's frequent inspections and also periodic inspections. So the difference will be a frequent inspection is, uh, is conducted by either an operator or other designated personnel at the location. Uh, for normal service, you would um, uh, conduct these inspections on a monthly basis. Heavy service, you would conduct them on a weekly to monthly basis. And severe service, you would uh, conduct daily to weekly. Now, periodic inspection is performed by a designated person. So uh, we partner with companies such as Mozilla 
who uh, offers these type of inspections. So for a normal service, you would conduct these inspections yearly. Heavy service, you would do them semi-annually. And under severe service, you would do quarterly.